All right, let's talk about Hero Superchargers. I have no idea how much or how little gameplay I'll be using in this video. If I resort to using gameplay for my older videos, I want to mention two important things. One, it doesn't really matter whether or not the gameplay is showing actual supercharged heroes or not. I just want to illustrate uh, how these heroes are used to be effective. And if there are any old gameplay, just understand that nothing much has really changed. And that was my second point that there, uh, it's not gonna make a big difference. I just just want you guys to understand how these heroes are used and why you should supercharge them now this is a fun topic because we have been getting hero superchargers in these weekly quests uh very often we're concerned in our current state of recording that these might actually be bugs or something because we've been getting way more hero superchargers than anything than anything else and a lot of people are mad about that understandably but i also want to say that they're not useless because hero superchargers can make heroes Stronger, kind of, meaning heroes like Stoneheart Farah, generally speaking, it's the uh, hero ability damage and the total health that actually gets bo uh, that, that actually gets buffed and bonused, and that doesn't really actually affect the damage. Meaning with Stoneheart Farah all the way maxed out, you're not really directly getting any bow damage from those hero superchargers, but abilities are a big bonus, and uh, that is a big thing in dungeons. I'm going to be referencing my uh, five awesome dungeon loadouts. There are two of these videos. They're like very interconnected. I highly recommend watching both of these. Uh, they are very worth it if you guys are trying to in improve upon your dungeon experience. And it's probably from these two videos that I'm going to be stealing a lot of my gameplay because I'm going to be talking a lot about the same heroes. And uh, I wanted to talk about spending superchargers because if you're going to be running dungeons, then buffing the heroes that you're using can help you a lot. Now, there are a couple of not notable things that I want to get out of the way right away. Now, if you do, uh, if you are one of those people who ends up using uh, Blakebeard's stash, not all of these loadouts use Blast from the Past. In fact, most of them use Happy Holidays, but if you're one of the people who uses Blakebeard Stash and you use those peg legs and coconuts and whatnot, you can actually get supercharged 130 peg legs if the commander that you are using is also supercharged. So you can see in this gameplay in a 140 zone, they were actually 130. Now, if you're running lower level dungeons, just speed running, A, you're probably not going to need superchargers, and B, uh, you might not actually get those supercharged peg legs because it seems to be only like 140 zones or very high level zones. I didn't test all of them. Uh, and then, of course, the coconuts can also have that supercharger thing. I don't know if it actually makes a difference, but if you're trying to improve upon your Blakebeard stash, there you go. A lot of people say that I'm like a Blast from the Past fanboy and whatnot, so it's always nice to talk about dungeons where uh, Happy Holidays is actually, more often than not, the perk to go to. The perk to go to. And that's also something I want to mention, because the other hero I've set aside is brand new, Extraterrestrial Rio got a massive buff. So if you're running any of the loadouts that I'm showing, and your commander is like Carbide, for example, who's doing energy damage, or if you're running uh, diecast jonesy in the lead doing energy damage with your minigun uh rio is a fantastic addition to the support she wasn't buffed in those old videos so i don't really think it's worth re-recording the entire video but in this newer upload i can say that she is a great bonus if you guys want to uh, slip that in there anywhere also noir i don't know if he existed in the first video i might have mentioned him in the second video either way if you're running lefty and righty at all he is a great way to extend the duration by quite a while although if you're speed running you might not want to be stuck in that animation for long so use this one with a little bit of forethought but if you're just trying to do tons of damage, then this is a great ability as well. And then lastly, Sea Wolf Jonesy. None of these three are something I'd recommend supercharging because the support in your uh, loadout is usually responsible for about 8% per hero. So only about like 40% uh, of your overall damage is actually coming from support. And that's why you really just want to supercharge your commander. You can supercharge the people in support and... If you supercharge, like, both of the minigun guys, then you might just, on accident, have a support hero that's supercharged. That's completely fine. It's going to be fine. You'll be okay. I'm just not recommending supercharging anything that's only going to be in your support. Rio is just a great uh, ability to put in there anyway, and pump metal. And coincidentally, I'm actually using both of these, so great example. Also, I can actually show it in my minigun loadout. All of these are stripped from the videos. I don't have it built right now. Well, in the minigun video, I highly recommend using Seawolf Jonesy as well. Again, I don't think he existed when I first uploaded these. Either way, I'm going to bring it up. Shockwave is something we spam a lot because of archetype havoc if I actually uh, scroll down to him uh, you can spam shockwave to increase your movement speed by 40 percent that is worth it and it is definitely faster and since we're re uh, since we're going ahead and using shockwave anyway then an extra 55 percent is quite nice to tack on on top of that all right all of that extra stuff out of the way let's get into heroes that are worth supercharging uh this is in no particular order I'm mostly going like al alphabetical or what I have in my brain but minigun is huge I'm not going to show a specific loadout that's what those other videos are for but if you're going to be running 
Subcommando Jonesy, which is kind of the old event hero. He is not available anymore. I recommend using him if you have him for the flex, but uh, what we are looking for is Commando Spitfire. They are exactly the same. You're not missing out on anything if you don't have this old Twitch Prime flex. So if you only have Commando Spitfire, supercharge him. I highly recommend it because he gives you that five and a half second cooldown with that 66% reduction. And that's literally just straight up. Uh, you can actually, if I compare right here, the stats against these guys, it's a great way of showing uh, my overlay is not, not hiding it. Uh, the ability damage goes up from 21.2 to 24.3. That's not major. I can tell you just off the top of my head that that's like three twenty ths higher. So like a 15% damage bonus. It's not insane, but that is something, you know, if you want to kill a monolith 14.5% faster or something like that, that will help you. It will give you nearly 40,000 more health without a teammate. That's kind of a lot. In the thick of things, do you not want 1,000, 1,400, 14,000 extra health uh, or extra shield, I should say? Like, these things are uh, very real bonuses that give you an actual bonus damage. And another one I can recommend is actually uh, the other lead. Now, I don't always run with Diecast Jonesy in the lead. I don't prefer it. He does have a longer delay. Um, and you can actually see that he has less overall ability damage. But if you look at his bonus, that's because he's increasing your going commando damage by 50% and making it energy, which is uh, quite the bonus. And I use him specifically for the Grotto, where you're fighting against four mini bosses that are all water type. Uh, so that energy damage will give you more overall damage because the uh, damage against water is quite reduced with uh, physical. But energy, it's only 75% of your total damage instead of like half your damage. So yeah, I would actually recommend supercharging Diecast Jonesy as well if you can afford it. And that's one of the examples I mentioned because if you're using Diecast Jonesy, then you definitely want Commando Spitfire and support. And if you're using Commando Spitfire, you definitely want diecast and support. So supercharging both of these, you can kind of double dip, and it's a really, really good thing to do. Uh, I actually saved quite a bit of training manuals from some of my grinding, just so I could actually spend some of my 15 hero superchargers, just to show you guys that I'm not just blowing smoke, and I actually do want to supercharge these guys. In fact, diecast Jonesy, probably one that I can do right now, because anytime I've ever needed him, it's because we need the damage, and having him supercharged is just a bonus I am happy to have. Now, this is where it's like no particular order, but uh, I guess we can actually talk about Luna because she is extraordinarily useful. She is especially useful with the uh, Blakebeard stash that I mentioned earlier. So if you're running those high level uh, ventures, not ventures, if you're running those high level, well, ventures too, for that matter, because Luna is extremely effective in normal gameplay. I have a loadout with her available pretty much 100% of the time because she is my go-to melee hero and should be yours as well. In fact, I supercharged uh, only one of her and then I used uh, V-Bucks on a second copy just just because I didn't want my melee videos to be biased in the future because if I show a video with a 130 Paleo Luna and then I supercharge her and then down the line because it gives her more health and Luna derives her damage from your total health. So supercharging her is a very good thing to do for normal damage and I don't want it to mess up my video. So I have two of them just for you guys. Uh, but if you're using her, she is very, very, very strong against the monoliths, which is what I meant to say earlier when I said ventures. Breaking the monoliths with a melee is very, very good with Luna and supercharging her just buffs that even further. And like I said, it'll supercharge your peg legs as well if you're in those 140 zones so really just all around very worth it to supercharge luna even if you're not even that into dungeons i think she is some someone who is certainly worth investing in uh let's talk about dragon scorch this is where i'm kind of just uh off the cuff here no more uh order to this list dragon scorch is just generally good we use him and hit the road i use him in like normal missions sometimes he's really great early game in some venture seasons because dragon slash is just super good in general and i think supercharging him just to make sure that dragon slash doing extra damage is nice in general i don't know what else to add to this I just think he's a good pick if you guys are looking to ever run Dragon Slash, which I'm sure you will. Carbide probably doesn't need much of an introduction, uh, but he's insanely strong. In fact, he alone is one of the reasons I actually made my Dungeon Loadouts video. There might be gameplay on screen. There might not be of me just, you know, spamming these and they're going everywhere. He's a very, very strong hero. And uh, I don't think he needs a supercharger, but quite strong. And then Raven is also tricky because his support perk as of recording and for like over a year now doesn't actually give you a 25% bonus damage with Carbide in the lead. I don't know why. I don't know if that's intended, but he does not increase the damage of Carbide as your commander. It's a bug, um, but I don't know. Raven has been very good in past venture seasons. When his cooldown was reduced enough, that 25% was really, really nice with Happy Holidays. And you could get ranged weapon eliminations. I think it was like a headshot elimination or something. Killed the cooldown by like four seconds each kill. Uh, really, really good bonus, but that was one venture season. So I don't know if I totally recommend using a hero supercharger on him like straight up. Yeah. <laughs> 
but he is definitely someone to keep in the back of your mind because he's extremely strong. And then the last two of this entire video, I'm actually going to talk about at the same time because Bunny Brawler Luna is a kunai build who drops egg bombs. It appears I made a mistake while recording. I'm just going to say this right now. I'm not sure how I'm going to interject this, but I confused Bunny Brawler Luna with the Ken guy. She does it during Shockwave and Dashing Hair Ken does it during kunai. The reason I mix these two up is because Shockwave is also actually usable and you can pretty much use either of these interchangeably. Regardless, all three of these bunnies are going to be good to supercharge. Forgive my mistake. And Cottontail Eagle Eye, one of my favorite builds, uh, drops egg bombs when you phase dash. These aren't two uh, ladies that you'll be using at the same time, but if you're using kunai and phase shift in separate loadouts, they are uh, quite strong on their own. And both of them are a little underpowered, which is where I'd recommend a supercharger. Believe it or not, a lot of people just think, oh, I should supercharge my strongest weapons. Well, like I said, I don't think Carbide is, like this is an example where Carbide, a lot of people might just go straight to him. Well, I don't actually think he needs any kind of buff. He's already annihilating everything. So you might want to, you know, supercharge Cottontail Eagle Eye or Bunny Brawler Luna as something that's lesser popular, maybe lesser strong than those other picks. And a supercharger would make them quite viable. I'm not going to supercharge them live on video, but if you guys ever catch me in a Twitch stream link down below, I might uh, run one of these loadouts and supercharge them myself. Because personally speaking, I prefer the Outland build. I like to speedrun uh, Inferno, that's what I find enjoyable, and since I'm mostly running a pacifist build here, there's actually no point whatsoever in supercharging Flash AC. I am just using him for phase shift. I am, if I'm attacking something, it's sort of a last resort, and I'm usually just stalling them with Shock Tower at that. So, uh, depending on your role in the team, you might not even need a supercharger, and it won't even matter. So, yeah, hopefully this gives you guys something to think about. Hopefully this gives you a reason to, to use your superchargers. I think there are certain heroes that are worth it. Uh, I'll come back to the minigun because Commando Spitfire is really useful in ventures as well, especially like in our current season where ranged weapon damage is actually reduced. Having an ability as strong as a minigun being your commander can really help you in the fight and in normal missions, so that's why I've actually supercharged Sub Commando Jonesy because no matter what season it is, no matter what event is going on, having a really good minigunner is always useful, and same thing goes with Luna and many of the others I, I mentioned here, and uh, you guys can make your own choices. Now, hopefully this gives you a reason to supercharge some other stuff that you might not have been considering, giving you a place to put those superchargers and, you know, maybe desire to get more of them. Uh, this was by no means an exhaustive list. There are lots of different heroes in the game, and depending on your playstyle, you might be interested in supercharging something that I didn't mention here today. I encourage you to use your own brain and whatever loadout you really enjoy using, then go ahead and supercharge that. If you really like Teddy and Shock Tower, maybe you're using Cyberclops in the lead and your Teddy has energy damage, then uh, supercharge that and throw Rio in the support. I don't know. It's up to you. You guys can play however you want, but uh, uh, maybe I could get the ball rolling a little bit with this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys want to use my code, support me on this channel, I really do appreciate you using code Mystic to check out. Subscribe if you're new. Twitch link down below. Uh, you guys can check out the five awesome dungeon loadouts link down below if you guys actually want to put some of these supercharged heroes into their uh, respective loadouts. I'll see you guys later and uh, thanks for watching. <laughs>